So the Summer Olympics are starting this Friday in Tokyo. I cannot wait. But this morning, we have learned an alternate on the U.S. women's gymnastics team, 18-year-old Kara Eaker, has tested positive for COVID-19 in Japan. She said she was vaccinated two months ago. Tennis star Coco Goff announced yesterday that she tested positive before traveling to Tokyo and will not make it to the Games to compete. So the question people are asking today, how many of the athletes competing for Team USA are vaccinated? Here's what the Today Show reported about it this morning. Do you have any idea whether or not the members of Team USA are vaccinated? No, nobody knows. Uh, you'd like to think that people are vaccinated, but nobody knows. And a lot of athletes have chosen not to because they felt it might in in inhibit their performance. Some of them legitimately think it might impact their performance. Okay. And we did talk to our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, about how that Could would... she be better than that interview? <laughs> he just repeated he everything she said in a we with a weird face. So good on him. Weird Why face. was he there? Okay. <laughs> to ask the questions, Albert, even if it means repeating it. Okay. But Dr. Pyle Coley did say that, you know... Listen, when you get the COVID vaccine, some people might fall sick for a couple of days. You might get a high fever, you, you're not able to train. So she speculates, just like many others are speculating that because of the fact that you might miss training for a couple of days, some athletes may have forgone the vaccination. But now we have incredible athletes not even being able to compete in the games from not getting vaccinated. And that's heart wrenching and disappointing. I mean, Sam, you're asking me, but I want to hear from you. I mean, you competed at the highest level division one as a swimmer. H how many people were on your team? Like when you competed? Team Team USA or no, Team UCLA? Team UCLA. Okay, so Team UCLA, like 35 swimmers. What and the percent, ones that you travel, can't be, maybe 18. You can't be sure of this, but like how many of them do you think would not have gotten the vaccine? Just knowing personalities. Maybe four. Right. Off okay. the top of my head, four of them. But here's the thing. And the IOC, now many people are speculating this could become a super spreader event. The IOC has said that they speculate 80% of the athletes will be vaccinated. So 20% of the athletes may not. Now they're going to be very staunch when it comes to testing, daily test testing. They're going to try and replicate kind of what happened with the NBA bubble. But I think too, the, the, what, what's really like unfortunate here is that there is a chance for it to become a super spreader event, Erica. And I don't know how they're going to prevent that. If you're already traveling, if you've already been on the airplane and then you're there in Tokyo, then what? Right, right. I mean, it's all like it's all a, a calculated risk at this point. No one knows what's going to happen. The fact that most people don't now know how many people are actually vaccinated. And it, it doesn't surprise me that there may be a, a large contingent of athletes who weren't vaccinated. I mean, if you're spending that much time and your body is literally your entire ticket, I would probably be very hesitant about normal things. So to have something that hasn't you want been to around, it? wouldn't you want to? I know, protect but at it, the though. same time, like I mean, I think of, I think, and this is just me kind of thinking in my head about like you being a vegan. Like you have decided to be very, very disciplined with what you put into your body. If you're bringing that to a level of elite athletes at the Olympics, I could see people being like, I'm not putting anything foreign into my body. And now it's a calculated risk. But you also forego the chance of playing in the Olympics, right? You have a four year wait period. Right. And this is your one shot. They put a lot of things in their bodies. Yeah. Athletes put a lot of things in their bodies. They try different supplements, whatever, whatever it may be. They do a lot of things. I'd rather get the vaccine and not forego taking that risk of, I trained for four years you for this. You trained your whole life This is my moment. Right. So, but to each their own, right? The, N, the NFL is having this problem, not problem. They're 73.8% vaccinated, but there's two teams that are under 50% vaccination. So so it's going to be a teammate. It's going to be a problem. Right. It's going to be a problem. It could cost right? your team a whole collective gold medal, right? Like the entire Team USA or the entire Team New Zealand or Australia, they could all collectively I mean, lose a medal as an actual team because some of their, their teammates did not want to get the vaccination. Sammy, should, we yeah. saw this in real time, and I don't want to cut you off, but this season the Denver Broncos had to play with, like, some dude that yep. was like at the movies they got a phone call basically <laughs> I mean he was terrible no hey, disrespect he was just like a dude at Whole Foods and he played quarterback because they were out of players I would be disappointed. this happened in the NFL this last season so we're seeing it yeah and I should say really quickly that the IOC has said the International Olympic Committee has said that the reason why they have not mandated vaccines is because they don't want us to be seen on an international level of motivating young healthy not vulnerable populations get the vaccine.
when there's so many people worldwide that do not have access to the vaccine. So that's mm -hmm. their stance. And I think that's actually a really good stance to have.